Hey everybody, this is Frederick Watts, and uh, this is Love in 60 Seconds tonight. Um, hopefully everybody's having a great Memorial Day. We are actually waiting for my wife to sign on, and uh, we're going to hit a good topic tonight. Hope everybody had a great holiday and is enjoying uh, this Memorial Day. Uh, give us a patient I'm trying to invite my wife so we can talk about our topic tonight our topic tonight is going to be um, uh, damaged goods and uh, we're going to talk about um, what to do when um, you feel like you have been damaged or how to be in a relationship when you feel that either you or your spouse have damaged goods so I'm inviting my wife so that she can come in and sign on with us and uh, and uh, waiting for her to sign on and hope all is well. So definitely we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, definitely uh, we're doing something different tonight. So like us and um, share this with everybody that you know if you're watching this broadcast after we're live. Uh, definitely share it if it's helpful with somebody. Leave your comments below so that we can... Uh, uh, just know what you're thinking and um, like I said um, I'm in a different city waiting for my wife uh, to come in and so we are asking her waiting for her to come on so that we can start so uh, give us just a second trying to get this up And if my wife is here, I need you to say something so that uh, I can add you on. There we go. There we go. All right. So once again tonight, we appreciate you guys signing on. Hey, Deborah Francis, how you doing? Uh, I have invited you. There she is. And I hear you. Great, great. So how you doing, sweetheart? I'm good, honey. How are you? Great. Can you hear me? Everything's good? Everything is good. Oh, you look so pretty. I miss you. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Too. We're going to get into the topic tonight, get right into it, and um, hope you guys enjoy it. I guess we're going to talk a little bit about damaged goods. Now, we really want to help you tonight to be how to respond, I guess, pretty much positively in your relationship, whether it be a marriage uh, relationship between um, husband and wife, mother and daughter, father and son, but how to respond positively in relationship when life throws you a curveball or when life happens. Um, you know, where wherever you are in life, wherever you are in your marriage, you know, God can still use you and he wants you to be successful. Would you agree, sweetheart? Absolutely. Um, everybody um, at some point, um, you know, God, when he creates us, he's, he creates us as perfect beings. Um, and he created us in his image. Everybody, he created us in his image. When the Bible says, he said, let us make man. Um, he didn't, uh, he, he, the Holy Spirit and Jesus didn't say, okay, we'll make somebody that's messed up. He made us in his image, which was perfect. So our spirit man um, was perfected. So I absolutely agree. Um, that, you know, we start out as a perfect person, but life throws us some curves balls. And, and then, you know, we want to show kind of how um, you begin to become uh, marred in that process. All right. And uh, talk just for 10 more seconds, sweetheart. I forgot to get something. I got to get something right fast. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> and see, this is what you got to do. When you are a marriage, a partnership, you have to cover for the other person when they forget to do something or when they fall short in whatever area you have to, um, you know, cover for them and you have to fill in the space, fill in the blanks, uh, because that's what a team does. And we are a team Watts. And so that's what happens. <laughs> but, um, again, you know, again, uh, uh, we are talking tonight uh, about uh, damaged goods and many of us in relationships um, in our marriage, uh, we, we're going to talk a little bit about how to get to the source of, 
of whether you're the person with damaged goods or your spouse or the both of you um, that you're coming into that relationship with damaged goods because each one of us, every part of us that we don't give to God, that part of us that's damaged and we don't allow to be made whole, we respond to life in that, in that manner. We respond to life and that becomes our normal. Right. And I think a lot of times people don't understand or may have been in a situation so long or um, uh, speaking with uh, one of our friends and we talked about what we said before about thinking that marriage is going to make you whole in relationships. And really, when you come into marriage, you really should be a whole person before you come into the marriage. But regardless of um, and I do believe that everybody has some type of are damaged goods. Um, and I believe that everybody has some type of experience where they've had a, a life situation that's made them damaged. But lo and behold, and never fret that God wants you to win. He wants you to be successful. The Bible says in 68, 19, it says, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. You know, it's, he renews us daily. And if you are having issues in relationships or if you're having issues where, you know, you're struggling, you know that God can renew and he is a daily renewer of all things. And so it is blessed when you're in the Lord that you know that he's daily loading you up with blessings and renewing that there's nothing that you can't conquer, that you can't experience, that you can't win with because God wants you to win. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, again, he wants you to win in your relationship, in your marriage and in your team efforts. So we want to kind of get into get into it and what kind of what constitutes damaged goods, what constitutes um, a person being uh, a damaged type of individual. Um, I, I spoke with somebody today and I was kind of trying to explain to them this concept. We were talking about relationships and I was trying to explain, explain to them the concept when you are damaged as a um wherever it happens, wherever that damage happens, and let's go here, we'll, you know, because there's so many different places it can be, um, you know, when you were little, somebody called you fat because you were overweight, and then you struggled all of your life with that name calling, or you struggled all your life, somebody said you were bald head, you know, you struggled mm -hmm. all your life, or you were too dark, or too light, or too tall, or too short, or whatever it was, you struggled all, all of your life. From that moment, you could have been uh, two years old, you could have been five years old, you could have been mm -hmm. seven years old, just... And you just really um, absorbed that and had an issue with that there. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to really talk about where those things happen and how God, um, he, how he starts us out, but then also how he wants to finish us. And I don't know, honey, I'm just kind of jumping in and there. You can kind of tell me where you want me to talk. No, we just we just keep flowing like this, you know, be patient with us. We're in different towns and cities tonight, but we're going to work it out because I truly believe that, um, you can't reach your fullest potential in a marriage or in any type of relationship um, when you have an area of your life that is damaged and you don't um, address it. You know, and like my wife says, some past areas that could be damaged, you know, maybe something happened as a child, which is normal, or maybe you don't even recognize it because you have a rip, you have a tear, you have something in your, your soul or in your persona that is damaged. You know, you, 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 you may be having trouble with money. You may be having trouble being confident, you know, and, and in certain areas of your marriage, God has a purpose for you. And he has a purpose for you to be successful as a team in a relationship, but you really need to address the areas um, where your life is damaged. And I do, I truly believe we all, have those issues you know maybe it's how you speak like my wife said maybe somebody teased you you know earlier in life and now you, you don't feel comfortable talking or you don't feel comfortable communicating you know maybe it's people say you can and you say you can't you know maybe it's how you view finances you know finances and marriage are one of the areas that a lot of people struggle in but if you're damaged in that area because of your past because maybe not of your own a lot maybe you grew up in a poverty mentality you know so you're not able to really function in your marriage because you grew up when lights getting cut off when uh your water getting turned off and all that it was normal to you you know that wasn't Absolutely. your fault right you, that was normal to you but now you make three times as much as your parents did in that situation and you're still struggling in that area, right? Because you're damaged, right? 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I 100% agree. A lot of times um, I have seen it a number of times that you have one one spouse that really feels like, okay, we can we can do this. We can get this kind of house. We can build a house. We can do this. Uh, we can um, take these kind of vacations. We can drive this kind of car. We can make this kind of progress. We can send our kids to this kind of school. And the other spouse is just like way down. Like, no, I am just like, I, I can't you know, I can't see us being there. I can't see us doing that. I can't see us obtaining those things um, because there's a different mentality there. And they, again, may have been damaged. They may have been raised in a poverty mentality or may have been raised that even in the church, like at, that's asking too much or that's trying to get too much or that's trying to be too big for yourself. And it's not trying to be too big for yourself. It is trying to um, obtain all of the blessings that God wants you to have um, and by reaching for those things. And, uh, you know, those people being on two different um uh, wavelengths when it comes to uh, obtaining things in life. And I've seen it, like I said, uh, so many different times. And I, even a little bit of myself, I always say that my husband, he, he, he brings me up because even when we were going, we were building our first house or we were looking for our first house. Um, I was like, I was really okay with just getting a little small starter home, maybe three bedrooms, you know, like, you know, 1100 square feet. I was not, you know, I'm just, you know, that's where I was. I was just, I just wanted my own because I, my parents owned their own and I wanted my own. Uh, but he was so like, <laughs> he was driving through neighborhoods. I was like, sir, who is going to live out here? I was like, yeah, we can live out here in these neighborhoods. Oh gosh, I don't know when. And then I remember being in a service and my bishop was preaching at the time. He was a pastor. He wasn't bishop yet, but he was pre- preaching. And God gave me a vision um, right in the middle of um, the service and said, this is your house. And I can only see like the foyer. And it was so amazing. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I can, couldn't believe that this is where I'm, but I still was thinking it was way down the line. And I remember uh, my husband calling me one day and he said, honey, I saw where we're going to build our house. And I was like, build our house? I'm like, what in the world? We was living in a one-bedroom apartment. Our kids were sleeping on a day bed. What? But that's, you know, I'm like, okay. And he went and he got me. When he came and got me and he took me to this place. And when I opened the door of the model home, I gasped because it was what God had shown me. And I said, that is that's amazing you know and he was so excited and he made me become excited but the key was that I was open I was open to um not being damaged in that area I was open to being healed in that area I was open to being raised in that area of my mentality and so he raised me up uh in that area and helped push me to the same level of faith that he was on with regard to where we would live and of course I'm sitting in our bedroom right now of the house that love bills <laughs> all right yeah man. and a lot of times when we talk about damaged goods you may not even realize it because like i said it, it has been systematically put into you I've, I've seen couples that sometimes um thank you liz love you and everybody else keep hitting those like buttons because we can't really tell we can't engage with you tonight unless you engage with us because we're in different parts of the country but um like we were saying a lot of times if you look at like if, and, and in relationships, it don't even have to be just marriage, but have you ever seen somebody who, who happens to, to always just um, put their partner, their spouse down, you know, always saying something negative? Um, they dress, they'll dress up like, hell, honey, and still say, oh, you look nice tonight. Your dress had the tone be like, oh, but your shoes, you know, oh, your feet. You know, you're damaged in the area because you want to take the spotlight off you because maybe something happened in your past, which caused you to, you know, not want to be able to communicate, not want to be able to give love. Maybe abuse happened. Maybe you've been raped. Maybe you had a divorce. Maybe you've had all these things. And the enemy tries to convict you to say that you can't be trusted. You're a failure. You, you can't, you'll never be intimate. You'll never have all these things, you know, that you're cursed, but that's lies. And a lot of times, if you don't address these issues and you don't rebuke the lies and confront them with truth, because the truth is, is that God's MO, God's motive is that he takes damaged goods and he makes them whole. So if there's things in your relationship or there's things in with your mom, with your dad, with whomever, don't believe the lie of the enemy that you can't not be made whole. And don't believe the lie of the enemy that your past 
affects your relationships of your future because no matter what no matter what area that we all have some issues in that were damaged god's motive is to make you whole Absolutely. And again, you know, God, he creates us. He started us out as perfect beings. The spirit man, when he said, let us make man, he did not say, let us make somebody that's messed up. Let's make Adam. He's going to be messed up. Let's make Eve. She's going to be messed up. He didn't, they didn't say that. The triune Godhead did not say that. He said, let us make them in our own image, which is a perfected image. And that spirit man is perfect. And so it's kind of like, um, I don't know if, you, if I can go here, honey, the example that you uh, had me to make uh, with regard yeah. to let, let's do that last. Let's. You want to do that last? Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do okay. that. All right. Yeah. You didn't tell me what to do, so I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. just going with what you said. But yeah. um, again, um, uh, uh, being damaged, and we want to talk about um, you know, it, it really, and and this is this is the part that becomes kind of intense because sometimes the way you deal with your spouse it still is the result of damages or a damaged relationship that you had prior to ever getting married. Um, you had been cheated on, you had been in a relationship before and you've been cheated on, or you had been in relationships before and you never felt like you were enough or you never felt like you were good enough or pretty enough or handsome enough or made enough money or you were enough in whatever area. And so you bring that experience into right. the relationship of the person who has committed to love you, who has committed to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to be with you and I want to be with you. I'm willing to be with you. And you bring that into that relationship. And you, every time you respond to that person, and it becomes normal. It becomes your normal uh, because you just used to responding like that. And it may have started when you were like in middle school, when one boy said, I like you, do you like me? And you say, yeah, I like you back. And then he said, no, I like your friend better. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and you, you felt rejected and it started there. Right. And if you don't give that damaged part to God, it does not, it cannot be healed. So you deal with your spouse on that same type of vibe all the time. You're dealing with your spouse, you're dealing with your spouse's family with that same vibe, that same feeling. Um, you know, whatever he do, he or she does, you deal with it. You respond to them out of that 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 hurt, that hurt person that was back in middle school. You right. respond to them. Right. Uh -oh. Um, you gotta know that. Um, nope, I'm, I'm back. Um you got to know that um, it's not uh, it's not uh, you uh, responding in the way that God wants you to respond. It's you responding in the way uh, out of that hurt from 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 the past. Right. And so, you know, every everything that we're saying is just not opinion. But let me give you some of God's word to show you that even if it's damaged goods that you may have, that if you understand who you are in Christ and whose you are, then you're able to take that principle and apply it to your relationships to be successful because my wife had talked about the scripture which we're basically going to talk about tonight is genesis 1 and 26 and it says and god said let us make man in our image and i've been in church all my life and i've heard this scripture but i've really never applied it to how you will to a relationship and it's funny because um when you look at it when you say let us that's the trinity that's god jesus and the holy ghost talking about making man now man had never been made before nothing, nothing so this was new in our image and a lot of times my first thought went to okay i'm gonna look like christ i'm gonna look like god you know in this body but when you think about it it said that the the enemy doesn't really want you to know who you are because the first thing is that you were not created in the image in a body because these were three spirits sitting around talking to each other. It wasn't a, 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 a spirit. So your likenesses and how you create it is spirit first. And you need to know that you were made by your parents. Me and my wife, we created Jazz and we created Frederick, but you were created and Justice, but you were created by God. So a lot of times with damaged goods and, and, and the situations that you have in life, you don't understand that the spirit is the first thing that you were created by and that God didn't make your flesh first, but he made your spirit first. And that is the way that you are created in the likeness and an image of God. And so the realist in you, the realist realism, and if you can get this, this will help you in your marriage, is to understand that you were made whole in the spirit first. Um, and then, you know, that in, 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 cause I, I want to give an analogy before we got to the box. Go 
Yeah. No. Okay. So, so you know, analogy is is like um, a glove. Now we all have gloves. We've all worn gloves, and so think about what God is saying. It says, "Let us make this glove. This glove that I got in my hand. This glove is us, right?" So He said, "Let us make us this glove in the image of a hand." So this glove has five fingers, right, and and everything. So this is how we are. This is how he's created. So this glove was made, but it's made in the relationship that we have with the hand. Would you agree, sweetheart? Absolutely. So Absolutely. Relationship. So without the hand, the glove has no purpose. And a lot of times we tend to just, you know, we don't focus on what our purpose is in our marriage and in our relationships because of the areas that we were damaged in so if you can think about this analogy that if you have this glove but when this hand gets into this glove and you put this glove on now this glove which is you has purpose it's the rub it's the warm it's to protect the hand so you were never created to live without god inside you you know, and, and and what people don't, you may not get, I, I don't know, I'm trying not to preach this, I'm just trying to talk, but if you think of a glove, you were never created, this glove was never created not to have the hand inside it. So you were never created not to have God's spirit inside of you, because I think Miles Monroe once said that where intent of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. And we must live with God on the inside. So the glove has no purpose if you don't have Christ or your hand on the inside. It's not a fan. You can fan things, but that's not the purpose of the glove. I could wipe my face with it, but it doesn't do me justice because that's not the purpose of a glove. So when you're damaged and you don't have Christ inside you, you're not able to fulfill your purpose. And then if you're not able to fulfill your purpose, you're not able to complete yourself and be that complete person that you need to be with your spouse. So I'm challenging you today is to allow God to take control of your inside. You know, we are we are the glove. We are this glove right here. We are what that is. But God is the hand. So without him on the inside, without him controlling us, he can take what was formless. This glove, I can bend it. I can ball it up. Is no good, is useless, is empty, it's broken. But when you have God on the inside, it now gives you purpose. And I challenge you, and I think that when you have a relationship, that when you live, live with God on the inside of you, you're able to have purpose. And that's the purpose that you need to be successful in any type of relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I agree. I think that, you know, you know many of us, uh, we operate, we don't operate in our purpose. We operate in that, like we're the fan or we're the thing to wipe the face and we're effectively kind of doing that. Um, but that's not our real purpose. But um, as it relates to um, us and our purpose and within our relationship with our spouses or relationships with our loved ones or the person that we think is possibly going to be our spouse at some point, um, you definitely want to make sure that you are giving those uh, parts of yourself that are broken or damaged to God. Because if we don't do that, it's like, um, you know, you, you meet people all the time. Well, you know, I'm gonna get myself together and then I'm gonna go to church or I'm gonna get myself together and then out or whatever the case is. And even if you're not even there spiritually yet, um, you have got to get to a place where that part of you is broken that is dealt with. You have a season that you deal with that part of you. Uh, again, like I say, you because you respond to your spouse um, in a way that is like, you know, they may say something like, you know, I really feel like, um, you know, I'd like for you to um, take me out on dates more. And, um, you know, I really want to go out and have a good time. And that the, the male might feel super pressured. It may make him feel a lot of pressure um, because maybe he had maybe taken somebody out on a date a long time ago. And then she was like, this is stupid and you are stupid and it's a waste of my time. And he doesn't feel adequate or feel like he can really put, he doesn't feel like he can put it together enough to impress her or enough to impress um, 
his spouse so he feels inadequate so he doesn't do it at all and then the other the woman is feeling like you know well she got hurt when she was 14 and wanted to go to the school dance and the guy was going to take her and he didn't take her and you know he took somebody else and she felt like she wasn't pretty enough and all so all of these old emotions all these old damaged feelings or even if it goes even deeper into that deeper than that like i said somebody was molested or somebody was abused or somebody was was uh, uh raped or somebody was taken advantage of somebody was um in a prior marriage and uh was cheated on and they're uh, even though that person that they're with hasn't cheated on them they still respond to them in that way. If they're somewhere doing something, they're like, where you at? Where you been? What you doing? Who you with? You know, my husband posted a funny meme um, a couple of days ago, talked about, you know, uh, <laughs> I guess the, the man was in an accident and he was like, his leg was broken, all that stuff. And uh, Tina took him to the hospital and, you know, he's getting ready to have surgery to amputate his leg. And the, his wife was like, who was Tina? And I'm like, oh, seriously, that's funny. And it's true. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 um, you know, those kinds of things you have to really make sure that you are dealing with in your life. You have to make sure that you're dealing with them and that you are really um, making sure that you are um, building yourself up and, and allowing that part of yourself um, to be made whole and allowing that part of yourself to be healed um, is really, really, really important. Um, so I just want, I wanted to throw that in. That's good. So how, how do you fix those areas in your life that are broken? Or how do you fix the areas in the life that you have barriers? And the, the first part of that is to acknowledge that, is that there are some areas in our lives that we still have to deal with. Um, because you can't, you can't ask God to fix something if you don't admit that you have a weak area, you know, and, and that you're damaged. And, you know, and I, I believe that we all everybody is damaged goods, you know, and, and a lot of people say, oh, no, not me, you know, I'm not claiming that, oh, I, I plead the blood, Jesus. you know, no, I need, I need you to really realize what the Bible says about areas in our lives which are damaged goods, and and Romans, um, uh, what is it, uh, let's see, Romans, or Psalms 5 and 12 says it, um, or Romans 5 and 12, and it says, when Adam sinned, sin entered the world, and Adam's sin brought death, and so death spread to everyone, for everyone has sinned, and, um, you know, and David said, I was born into iniquity, you know, God can't bless you where you pretend to be, so don't let pride damage your life, and don't let pride mess up your marriage because you won't admit a fault. But what I like about it and what I believe is that I am not adequately equipped to be a good husband, to be a good father without God on the inside. Because the glove analogy, when I have God on the inside of me, then that enables me to be a provider and it enables me to be a protector enables me to be a lover, enables me to be a leader, enables me to be everything. But without him on the inside, then I'm damaged. And our Bishop, uh, Bishop Shelby preached one a message that really stuck with me that everybody in their life has a deal with this season. And there's the issues in your life, your damages, where God will give you an opportunity to deal with it. And so the first way to solve being damaged is just to address the issue that, yeah, there's some areas in my life that I can be better. And when I put God on the inside of me, that allows me to do the first thing, because the first thing of being of being what is of being uh, having a breakthrough is knowing that you are spirit because we are created in his image. And the second thing that we're going to get to and um, let my wife talk about and bring an example is that you have to know who you're fighting. If you ever heard um, uh, Jonathan McReynolds, he has this uh, thing called Cycles, a song called Cycles. I love it. Very t it talks about, you know, going back and dealing with the same thing. Well, the enemy has purpose, just like you have purpose. And his purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. And he knows how to fight you in certain areas. But if you're not able to fight back, or if you don't know what the enemy has, then you're never going to be able to fight him in the way that you need to be effective to stop these cycles, to stop these barriers from ha happening. Would you agree, sweetheart? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, you have to make sure that um, uh, you are aware of your enemy that you know his devices. Uh, you know, the Bible says, be not ignorant of the devices of Satan. Um, you got to know what he's, what he's capable of. And he really does not want you to deal with um, the things head on. 
he wants you to put a, a sugar coat it and put it over and, 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 and wants you to deal with it in a certain way or the same way for so long that you don't realize that that's not normal, that you don't realize um, it's not um, the way you should, you know, you should be dealing with things or the way that you should respond to things. Right. It even, uh, and I want to deal with this a little bit too. If you are the offender, you are the person who damaged someone. If you are the person who hurt someone, if you are responsible for um, uh, damaging someone and you're trying to come back together, you're trying to get yourself back on the same track, you know, you have to have ample patience, ample patience in dealing with that. And, you know, uh, and look, and, and what is it? And now, uh, you know, you all can say what you want to about Beyonce, but she said some very good things in her um her album that she, I think it was Lemonade that she had put out. And she said, um, she was doing a, a poetic thing and she said, uh, put me back together like you once tore me into. Something like that. It, it went, you know, and you have the power when you have damaged someone, you have the power. God does too, obviously. He has all the power, but you have a contributing factor to be able to put that person back together by your humility, by your, um, you know, uh, apologies, by your ministering to them, and by your changing of your what you've done and changing your lifestyle, you have the ability to help heal that person and help put that person back together again. So, um, you know, you have a responsibility to go back and do your first works over. You have a responsibility to go back and to help um, put that, uh, make that situation right. You have, you have a, the power to do so. And so um, if you've been the offender, then you have the power to, um, to heal the offense. Um, but, um, you know, God, you know, when he, he puts us and I'll go to my analogy now, I think, um, sure. and this is just kind of sort of analogy, um, but um, this box kind of represents uh, how we come, you know, how God creates us. We are perfect. Little babies are perfect and we're just great. We're just a gift to the world. We're gifts. We're gifts from God to our parents who came, you know, came together. And whether they like it or not, we have a, a friend who calls all her children gifts and they indeed have proven to be so. So we speak the same thing over our children that they are all gifts to us. In fact, they are crowns to us, um, our children. And this, this gift is amazing. But um, life happens and things happen. Again, you know, you get disappointed and, um, you know, uh, something happens mm -hmm. where, you know, you are in a relationship, you start. Yeah, I think I got lost there a minute. I might, I might be running out of time. I don't know. But uh, you, get, you get into a bad relationship. You got marks and you got things that's happening. Uh, you know, stuff gets pulled off. You, and you start getting, you start getting, you know, just really, really going through some real bad stuff. Stuff starts happening. Um, you uh, get married and you thought it was, this person was going to love you forever. And then they turn out to be a, a jerk and, or, you know, things just don't work out or that person cheated on. So it just, you know, or they, you know, took all your money or just didn't do you right. All these things begin to happen um, to this outer part, this to your flesh you start hooking up with people that you're not supposed to be hooked up with you start doing things that you're not supposed to be doing you start maybe drinking smoking getting high whatever it is you start doing all of these things to this body part and this box is super it's starting to look real like it's got a situation the bow is gone it's got marked up you can't really see it as much because of the color of the box but it's this box and it's we just we just messed this poor box up. This box is really messed up. So I'm looking at this poor box, and this box is damaged. And if you went to the store and you were trying to get something from this box um, or buy something and you saw this box, you'd be like, mm, mm Or if they shipped you this box, like, I'm the queen of Amazon. If they sent me this box and my box was damaged like this, I'd be like, oh, no, nah, sir. We're going to have to get a discount on this sweet box. But the box itself, the outer part, even though it is damaged, even though it has had some really bad things happen to the outer part of this box. God is not concerned about the covering. He's concerned about the contents. So even though the covering is damaged and messed up, even though, you know, you've gone through um, bad relationships, you've gone through uh, difficulty uh, with your spouse, you've gone through some bad things that's happened with your children, you've gone through some terrible things, the covering is damaged. But God knows that the content is still good. So um, 
basically what happens is even though we want to discount it and even though the enemy says that you should be discounted this should be a discount this should you should get some off of this or i don't even want it at all it should be disc discounted or discarded god knows that the contents is still valuable even though this is not that valuable let's change my my thing gold hoop earrings all right he knows that the content is valuable what's inside and there's nothing that has happened to this so the spirit man is still wonderfully intact and still can be connected to god no matter what this outer part looks like no matter what this box this damaged content uh container looks like the inside what's valuable and what god deems is valuable and what looks like him what is made like him is still intact and is still able to be perfected by him wow. and still be able to be perfectly used and connected to him. That's good. That's good. And let's talk, man, that, that's, I'm, you got me excited because when you think about it, we are three, we are a Trinity, just like God is a Trinity. So we are spirit first because God said in this word that he was going to make us in his image. So his image is spirit. So that is the content is our spirit. But we're also two other things. We are also flesh and we are also soul. So soul is mind, soul is body, soul is emotions, right? And the container, mm -hmm. that box that you damaged, that was your frame. That was your covering. So I, I like that analogy, sweetheart, because when you think about it, when you were poking holes, the first thing that the enemy tries to attack you is because you have purpose in your relationships. You have purpose in your marriage. God is giving you purpose because the Bible says, for I have thoughts of you that I think towards you that are, says the Lord, that are thoughts of peace, that are thoughts of uh, not evil to give you an expected end. So God wants you to be successful in your marriage. I truly believe it. But just like I said before, the devil has purpose too. But here's the thing that a lot of Christians or a lot of people don't understand is how the enemy works. The enemy can't get to your spirit until he at first attacks your soul. So he first attacked your covering. He first attacked that outside. Mm -hmm. He first attacked how you think, how you feel, what you do. You know, you know that pretty box that was wrapped up the first thing that you did was poke at it. So that's not even, you know, that, that, that soul is saying, you know what, what happened to me when I was six years old, you know, you got raped, you got molested, or you were called stupid. So, you know, you're, you're always going to be a failure or guess what? You had a marriage. It didn't work out so that you'll never be trusted in your second marriage. The enemy attacks your mind first. And so after he's attacking your mind, then he'll go and attack your body, you know, because he'll, he'll start introducing you to stuff. You had an issue with porn in your life. You had an issue um, where somebody bullied you. You had an issue where somebody, um, abandoned you or abused you. So your emotions, your will is now affected. So now you start doing things with your body. You start having illicit sex. You had a lot of things that um, destroyed your body. You have, you started doing drugs. You know, you started doing all these things because your covering is damaged due to life experiences. But what I like is what you said is that even though that covering was stained, even though that that box was damaged beyond repair, glory to God, the contents, which is your spirit, was not damaged. And that's what God looks at. So you have to be able to understand, I may have some damaged emotions, I may have some damaged will, but God's perfect for my life and my, his purpose is for me to be successful, for me to have the purpose. You know, it's a shame for you to get on this earth and live a whole life and not know what your purpose in God is. And then, like we said before, you can't be successfully married and be a, unless you come into the marriage as a whole. So, you know, don't get it. If you've been in relationships, if you had issues, you're dealing in marriage. It's, we're talking about marriage, about what well, my wife said, offenses. When life has brought offenses to you, when you've had hurt, when there's no peace, when you've been disappointed, when you deal with failures, when you do, God is still a restorer. And one thing that God restores mostly is time, you know, and yes. like, like my wife said, you know, if she was the consumer and, 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 and I'm, I'm almost done, but I, God just gave me this. you're a consumer. And when the consumer looked at that box that you had, that was damaged, 
you're saying, you know what? I need another one of those. I don't want that one. That one's ugly. You know, I, but you know, I don't want that. But what I like about God is that God is like, you know what? I created the content in that box. So I know what is inside. So I don't care what the outside looks like. I care what's on the inside. <laughs> so I know the value of the content. And because I know the value of the content and not the container and not the covering, not only do I want it, but I'm going to pay full price for it because I sacrificed my life. I gave my life for you. I died on the cross for you because you're worth it. So if you can acknowledge the issues in your life where you are struggling, the issues in your marriage where you are, are damaged, be assured that your content your spirit inside of you is what God loves and that it doesn't matter what you did in your past, what relationships you had, what you came into, what you did is that God understands and that he is a Absolutely. Healer and he wants your content. He's willing to pay full price no matter what you did. And to me, that Absolutely. that's amazing. That is, that is amazing. Absolutely. And not only that, you know, um, this, your spirit, is what is they you know that that part of you that's the part that connects to your spouse you know you're made one flesh but you're also made um you know you're intertwined your spirit you are you're made one you know uh, you're made whole together and uh as you guys come together and as you come together in prayer and you bring those broken parts to god he can heal you in such a way and he can make you whole in such a way that um, those damaged parts of you that you don't respond as a damaged person because hurt people hurt other people and right. you can have somebody who's absolutely amazing and who is amazing to you but you're ever searching because you are feeling some inadequacy from that part of you that was damaged and we always you know feel like we have to get ourselves right or be right or be better or work on ourselves which we do but it's okay to tell God how you are, how you're feeling. I'm really upset with my husband. I'm really upset with my, my, my wife. I don't know why I'm feeling like this. Oh, I do know why I'm feeling like this. Whatever the case is, but being honest and bringing it to God and, and then asking him to help you to determine why you're feeling weird, why you're tripping out, why you're upset, and then allowing him to heal you because he is the healer. He's the balm and Gilead. He's the person who makes everybody whole. And he is the one that can make you right. Uh, and he can make you right together so that you guys can have a blessed and blissful and happy and, um, and joyful relationship and marriage. Um, it's hard to do when you, you got a bunch of broken pieces. But again, God is, he specializes in broken things. Yeah, he specializes in broken yeah. things. So he does. He's a, he's a potter. He puts things back together. God bless you, brother Page. We 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 love you and appreciate your comments. You know, he he. God is willing to pay the price for your damages, but all you have to do is just acknowledge where we are and and, and what it is that it is and what what it is that you have because you know God knows our weaknesses, and He faced all of the same things that we experienced. And he just did it without sin. So we're not perfect, but the God that lives in us is perfect. You know, so I'm encouraging you today that there is no situation that you can't face as a couple, as in a marriage, but you still have to identify yourself areas in your life that you may be damaged so that you don't go into this, into these same cycles that you don't, you don't, you know, repeat these things because purpose in life your purpose is your marriage is that you guys are winners you are a team you're a winner you are an overcomer no matter what your container looks like no matter what your body looks like no matter if your covering is damaged because you are spirit first and because you are spirit first you know then what is greater what is in you is greater than any abuse that you've had what is in you is greater than any failure that you've had what is in you is greater than any abortion that you have what is in you is greater than any divorce that you've experienced what is in you is greater than any fear that you have what is in you is greater than any disappointment what is in you is greater than any loss what is in you is greater than any tragedy you know almost i want to say who is in you is greater than all those things who 
was in it and he was greater than death who was in you is greater than the grave and you are not damaged if christ is in you and if christ is in you who can be against you and if christ is for you, who can be against you? so if you are able to first acknowledge what is damaged in your area allow christ to be that glove or christ to be that hand that fits in the glove there's no area in your marriage and your relationship that you can't fix absolutely and i i mean all of that i i think we're wrapping it up but i i i 100 agree with what you said honey um you know if you have allow christ into your heart, into your relationship, into your marriage. And, and you know, it's a, it's a, it's a personal work first. You got to uh, let them in inside your personal space, inside your heart. And you got to be honest and transparent about the things that you're feeling. If you say, you know, dude, my, you know, my husband hurt my feelings when this particular thing happened, or my wife hurt my feelings, or I don't really trust them. And I don't know why I don't trust them. Or I don't really trust him and I do know why I don't trust him, but I really want to trust him and I need your help because he hasn't done anything for me not to trust him right now and I still can't trust him or I, I still don't believe that he's going to bring home the money or I still don't believe that he's going to be able to make enough. I need you, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me with this money thing because I feel like I got to control everything or I feel like I have to control What's happening and why do I feel like I got to control everything? Well, there might have been a time that you felt like you were out of control or things were out of control and you didn't have a hold on it, that you were going to lose everything. But you have got to know that, you know, God is the one that's in control of everything. So you got to just really make sure that you are, um, you know, taking those things to God and to your spouse, having a, a, a communication honestly. But most of all, you know, if you don't feel like you can go to your spouse, you can go to God. And I told somebody today, you'll be surprised at how much God doesn't judge us the way that we judge ourselves or the way that we judge our spouses. He doesn't judge, judge us like that. You know, he understands that we are, he, he wrapped us in this flesh. So he knows how, how tricky this flesh can be. He knows how silly this flesh can be. He knows how much of a failure this flesh can be. That is why we have the spirit. That is why we have the soul. And really it's the spirit because the spirit is always at war with this flesh. The spirit is always telling this flesh, no, let's not do that. And this flesh is saying, mm -hmm, I am going to do it because I like it. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. I like the way it tastes. Whatever it is, the, the flesh is going to fight against the spirit. But if you're honest with God and you're honest with yourself, what you're feeling and you're putting out yourself to God, then God is able to heal you in those places. You got to give it to him. You're like, okay, you know, I got a bad attitude. I got a bad mouth. I talk crazy to my husband all the time. Give that to God. I don't know why I talk crazy. I don't know why I tear him down like that. I don't know why I do him like I do him. Give it to God. And allow him to help you, to heal you, and to let you know, you know, how to be a, a more gentle spirit or to be whatever it is that you need to be in that relationship. You, you got to give it to God, though. If you don't, um, you know, you really are going to not be able to handle it within yourself, but you definitely um, have to be honest. Right. And God is a mender of broken hearts. He is a person that, like we say, that potter analogy that he wants to put broken pieces back together. So when you are damaged, you know, that's a personal relationship that you have with God. But also with your spouse, you still have to communicate. The worst thing that you can do is keep secrets. You know, one thing I do believe is pre- um, premarital counseling. I think that's important so that you can communicate and say, you know, after 20 years of marriage, I don't have any secrets from you, but this is my damaged area. So I might do these things because of this, you know, so that you can communicate and that, you know, that you're not worried about failures or, or and then your spouse has compassion and may be able to understand and have some patience while you're dealing with that the area of damage. So and also that they can deal with the areas that they're damaged in. You know, but the the good thing about it is that once you put God on the inside, there's no area that can't be fixed. And God has a purpose for your marriage. He has a purpose of it for your relationship and is to be successful, is to be prosperous, and is to live in how he designed that marriage to be and that relationship to be. So um, we appreciate you guys Absolutely. signing in. Appreciate you guys watching. Please share and like this uh, with everybody. Thank you guys for taking out time on your holiday uh, to come and talk with us. 
you know, please send us, continue to send us and like us on Facebook and on Instagram. Watch this, this broadcast again on Facebook and on YouTube as well. Everything is under WhatsApp Entertainment or WhatsApp Media. DM us, DM us some topics that you'd like to talk about and share with us. We hope this has been a blessing to you. We love you. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you love for you your too. God bless you, Brother Anderson. This is Love in 60 Seconds. Anything else we are? Nothing else except if just remember if you're dealing with a, a damaged goods or you feel like damaged goods or you feel like you're married to damaged goods, nothing is impossible. Nothing is irreversible. God is able to do absolutely anything. And if you communicate and you communicate to God and communicate to your spouse, God can give you a great and wonderful and fulfilling marriage. God bless you. Love you guys. See you next week, Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.